Today's tutorial is going to cover how to create a faded boundary using the multi-buffer ring tool. Our end result will look like this. And uh, here we go. Let's begin. All right. So the first step is to access the multi-ring buffer tool, which can be accessed through two different locations. Um, the first being our toolbox. Just go over here to Analysis Tools, then Proximity, and select the multi-buffer ring tool. Uh, the other way is to go to the search bar and just type in buffer. And right here we have the multi-buffer ring tool. This is the same tool, it's just user preference on how you access it. All right, uh, for this example, I'm gonna use the Yosemite National Park boundary to create this faded boundary. All right, so we wanna just drag in that uh, boundary file. Uh, I'll just set the output location to my default geodatabase uh, and just start typing in the distances. Uh, because we're at about 1 to 350,000 scale, um, I'm going to use meters and start off somewhere around 1,000. And in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to create a buffer that goes on the inside. So I'm going to use negative numbers. Now, if I wanted to go on the outside out, I would do positive numbers. So again, I'm going to go on the inside, so I'm going to use negative numbers. So start typing these in. And once I hit about 500, I want to start going down in increments of 50 until I reach about uh, 150 or so, or 100. That way it's a smooth transition. Now that I'm at 150, I'm going to step down by 25 all right, and as you can see, we start off at negative 1,000, and we're going to go all the way down um, until we hit 25. All right, the next step which you want to do is set the buffer unit down to, in this case, I'm going to pick meters because we're at the scale. Uh, distance field is fine, and this option basically allows you to have either rings. If we choose all, it'll create rings, and if we choose none, It'll basically create rings on top of rings, so we'll have overlap. So in this case, we'll choose all, and we'll hit run. Once we have the tool going, the next step, what I want to do in the meantime, is just go in here and create a color ramp file so that we can easily apply that to the buffer, which will create our nice transition from light to dark, which will create the fading effect. All right, so we'll go in here, go to Symbology, under categories, what I want to do is um, go in here and just pick a color ramp that's already set. Then I'll go to properties, and what I'm actually going to do is just click on the first one and set this to a light green, something that's pretty light that will act as a good, you know, fade-in effect. So this is a little bit too dark for me. I think I'm going to go in here and change it using the hue, saturation, and value and put this to something about 10, click OK. Then I, I want to pick a nice middle green color since we have a whole other category we have to do. So I'm going to pick McGraw Green, click OK, and then go into the second one, go Properties here, and um, I'm going to pick McGraw Green again, and then in the second color I'm going to pick something dark. So in this case, I'm going to choose for green. So as you can see, we have a nice color ramp here that goes from light transitions into dark. So we'll click OK. And what we want to do is right click on here again and go save to style. And we'll save this for future use and also so once the buffer is complete, we can easily apply it. Once our buffer is complete, the next thing what we want to do is take that color ramp we just created and apply that to the new buffer. So go in here and uh, we'll choose the color ramp we picked. Click OK. And as you can see, there's our buffer. Nice faded boundary. Thank you very much.